Thank right. you so much for taking the time to meet up with me. Thank you. It's good to see you again, Mark. You too, man. This is like, I don't know if you get the sense of it because you're on the, the musician side of it, but the, as a fan, how enormously uh, unusual this event is. Yeah, it's, it's hard to put into words. It's sort of a, a once-in-a-lifetime thing. And I, I've had a, a life full of once-in-a-lifetime things, and then we do it again. you know. But this is something that we may never do again. Yeah. This may truly be once-in-a-lifetime. Twice. <laughs> yeah, except next week yeah. is the second that, time. The second time in a lifetime, yeah. yeah it's, it's remarkable for me. I mean, these are all acts that I've loved since I was a kid, obviously. And being a part of Paul McCartney's band for nearly 15 years now, it's like we've had access to some amazing times playing the White House and traveling the world. And But this is really remarkable to be on par and on the, on the same weekend of the Stones and Neil and Bob and right. The Who. It's pretty remarkable. It is. And, and I was thinking about this, and you're kind of a, a rock historian, so maybe you know the answer to this. When is the last time Paul, either as solo or as a Beatle, was ever on a bill with the Rolling Stones and or the Who? I, I, I would have to venture that the only time that would have happened before would have been something for like a Prince's Trust thing where it was more of a jam and everyone was there. Or, you know what? Um, after 9-11, concert for New York, right. concert for 9-11, concert for New York. Then it was Bowie, the Who, the Stones, and Paul, yeah. And All You Need Is Love. That's the, true. The All You Need Is Love broadcast, they kind of uh, showed up and were... That's true, that's right. Yeah, Rock and Roll Circus and All You Need Is Love. Yeah, they were there as part of that. Now, you were here in this very same spot for Paul McCartney playing Coachella. Yeah. I don't know, what was that, eight or ten years ago? 2009 or 10. I, sorry, I don't remember the date. Yeah, yeah. How does it feel different? How is it, does it feel different? Or is this just another gig for you, Brian? No, no, this is much more than another gig. I've sort of been psyching myself up for this for a while. I'm just super excited to be here. I think uh, Coachella, when we did it, I think it was 09, was big for us because Paul hadn't been known to be a festival kind of performer. He would just, you know, come to see Paul McCartney is what you would do, you know. Now, of course, he's sort of in he's engendered so much love with a younger audience because so many of these kids were at Coachella who would maybe not normally go to a Paul McCartney concert, but then were, you know, in front of them getting their faces ripped off by by Paul singing Helter Skelter and like blowing their minds yeah exactly and and uh i would you know i was there for that and it, it brought it brought that music to a to a whole to the modern day I it made it so. it made it relevant today it still is and to see you guys up there doing those songs that the beatles never performed live yeah. it's, it's pretty amazing that's true because they stopped performing as you all know in 1966 was their last tour and decided like screw it we don't want to be out here leaving these venues where we can't hear ourselves and we you know, that screaming is so loud, we can't hear ourselves. Get in an unmarked van, sit on the floor of that van. It's like, it ain't too glamorous. So screw it, we're just going to go make an album and get into our imagination. They made Sgt. Peppers and, you know, the rest is that history. Now, if you don't know, Brian Ray, guitarist for, for Paul McCartney, also, you played with Etta James. I played with Etta James since I was a little nipper. She got me, like, right out of high school. I was... 18 years old the first time I played with her and I stayed with her for 14 years as her musical director. It was a magnificent time. I feel so lucky and she picked me up out of nowhere. I was just a little greenhorn, a little blonde kid, you know, and she found something in me that she liked. She kept me around for 14 years, bless her. And we were very close, yeah. That's kind of a great way to go to school, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh my God, what a school that was, yeah. Now, also, the Bayonets. Brian has a, a band, the Bayonets, that you probably heard about. Yes, yeah, that's uh, in partnership with my good buddy, Oliver Lieber, who's a fantastic songwriter, musician, and uh, producer on his own. And we got together, and we were just going to do some more Brian Ray solo stuff, which he's been a part of before for two previous Brian Ray albums. And he said, well, why don't we just do a band project? I want to do a band project. I said, okay. And it was that simple. I just said, yeah. Then it was about finding a name. And well, first we wrote some songs, then we found a name. Yeah. And we did an album that came out a couple of years ago. And 
we were all over the radio. It kind of blew our minds. You know, there we were on the underground garage and KLOS and, uh, you know, 103 The Sound, you know. Very, very cool. I, I want to ask you, you know, you've been with Paul McCartney many, many years. In fact, more years than he was with any other band. Right. That's true. Yeah, I guess so. The Beatles was his longest firm lineup that remained the same until this band, which has been together, like I said, almost 15 years. The Beatles with that lineup were together for eight years. So yeah, and longer than Wings. Longer than Wings because they changed membership. Yeah. So you told me this one little story about the very beginning of Drive My Car, where you thought you had it, you you knew that song backwards and forward, and, and he corrected you. Well, you know, it's a funny thing. That's one of those, I don't know if you or your listeners are have ever experienced this phenomena where a song intro has you stumped as to where the downbeat is, where the beat is, where to nod your head. And that's one of those songs that has this bow down, and you don't know where the one is. It just sounds like a random lick. And for my whole life, I thought I knew where that downbeat was. And I was so wrong that I couldn't learn it the new way. I had to, you know, I had to stand in front of Wix, the keyboard player, and watch him nod his head until I got it. And now I think I finally got it. Well, perhaps we'll hear that one when you're performing here on the stage for Desert Trip. Man, I'm so happy for you too, Mark. Man, your career has just been awesome. I'm really happy at KLOS. We're having a great time Are with you? Jonesy's Jukebox yeah. and Check One Two. Everybody, we're having a great time. Yeah, yeah. I have a solo single coming out in a while too. Bring it on. Bring it on. Uh, yeah. Maybe on uh, your Check One Two. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Ray from Paul McCartney's band. Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us. Thanks a lot, Mark. Great right to on. see you, Mr. Shovel. Great to see you too, man. Mr. Shovel in the house. <laughs>